Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and I know the Pokemon Presents was a couple weeks ago now, and I haven't gotten a chance to kind of give my thoughts on it or talk about it too much, but since we're getting back into the swing of things here, I wanted to start by giving some of my thoughts on the Presents, what we saw, what we didn't see, talking about what it might mean for Pokemon's immediate future, and all of that stuff, and generally, I gotta say, it was kind of disappointing. Let's talk about it. So let's get right out of the way. Uh, the big thing that they announced in the presents was, of course, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. It's not Kalos. We did get some teasers of new areas, uh, what the story would be about, what the Crystal Legendary could or could not be. And since we've had these new Pokemon revealed, there's been some debate in the community about if it is the... The, uh, the Crystal Legendary, the Pokemon that is influencing everything going on in the Paldea region. We'll see. That will be revealed to us in due time. We have a very long time to speculate about what we saw in the trailer as unlike what most of us predicted, which was two parts to the DLC, which we are getting, but we thought they'd be a little more spaced out. I myself predicted a July release for the first part and then a fall slash winter release for the second part, but they announced that both are coming at the end of the year. Both are coming winter, fall, that time of year. So we got a while to wait. We're going to get a bunch of trailers. We're probably going to have more of a normal year leading up to a brand new game, that kind of news cycle, except for the DLC. So probably less trailers, but we'll see them throughout the year. So we don't have a ton to go off of right now. We saw some of the things that were teased in it. We saw some of the new Pokemon, some new legendaries and some new regular Pokemon. You're able to buy it right now if you want on your copy of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It's a little more expensive than the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC pass was. So there's a lot to talk about with that, but that's what we're dealing with. So they announced it. We'll have deep dive videos on it soon and everything we saw in that trailer. But there were some glaring omissions from this presents. Nintendo announced a couple weeks ago that they were bringing Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games to Nintendo Switch Online. Game Boy games were going to be in the base model of NSO and Game Boy Advance games were going to be locked behind the expansion pack, which has DLC for a bunch of games, Splatoon, Mario Kart, Animal Crossing, gives you access to N64 games and now it gives you access to uh, Sega Genesis games and now you also have Game Boy Advance. That's fine. That's all well and good. There were even some Pokemon games teased that will be coming in the future, but one glaring omission from that was the mainline Pokemon games, Red, Blue, and Yellow, Gold, Silver, Crystal, the games we've already had on Virtual Console on the 3DS. And then now that we have Game Boy Advance, the logical assumption is, okay, well, we're going to get the Generation 3 titles. We're going to get Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. We're going to get Fire Red and Leaf Green. Nope. Didn't happen. We expected them to be announced on Pokemon Day. We thought, well, now that we have GBA, it's the perfect time to announce them. Even if they do a sporadic release where maybe we see Gens 1 and 2 released uh, close to the announcement or on Pokemon Day and then announce GBA games coming later, maybe we'll see that. We didn't get anything. There were some community insiders who found that the game's ROMs already run pretty well on the Switch with, with trading and other things already intact. So the logical assumption was... Everything lines up perfectly for us to get these. We didn't. They didn't announce anything for NSO. Not red, blue, and yellow. Not gold, silver, crystal. Things we've already gotten. Not new stuff. That's really disappointing. It, there, there's a lot of discussion about game preservation, especially now that we're in the month where the Wii U and 3DS eShops are effectively shutting down. You'll no longer be able to make purchases from them starting at the end of this month. You'll be able to re-download titles you already have, and multiplayer things will still be active for games you have, so Mario Kart, Pokemon trading, things of that nature. But once the purchases stop, if you don't own these titles, you can no longer play them on the hardware they came out in. Pokemon games are very expensive to buy offhand online, whether it's eBay, whether you go to a game shop. Prices only get higher as the years roll on since these games aren't being manufactured anymore. And they're some of the most iconic games on these systems. They did the right thing by putting them on the virtual console for a relatively inexpensive price. I own, I think, blue and yellow and crystal on my 3DS. I would love to play the Gen 3 games on a, an updated piece of hardware like the Switch and be able to play them on my TV. These games are very difficult to buy. These games are incredibly expensive to buy. Nintendo has the ROMs, the ROMs work. Nintendo has the means to put these on when they want. 
but they don't. They drip feed all of their titles onto the NSO service, and for whatever reason, Pokemon is not being promoted as a big one. Now listen, I would be very surprised if by this time next year, there is no Pokemon titles on NSO, none of the mainline ones. I think at some point this year, we're going to get them. I just, I don't understand why you hold them back. Nintendo is in the, 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 the last handful of years for their Nintendo Switch system. Why are we still drip feeding these titles? Is NSO going to make a transition to whatever the next piece of hardware is from Nintendo, the, the quote unquote Switch 2, if we ever get it? Will we have that backwards compatibility? If we don't, and a lot of this stuff is locked on the Switch, sitting here and just drip feeding it continuously when these games are decades old now is absolutely just it, it, it's malpractice to your consumers I, it's malpractice towards Nintendo fans and towards Pokemon fans and I just think it's a mistake that they didn't announce them at this event because we know they can do it whenever they want so we'll see what happens with that in the future I've harped on this topic for a year now. I've had multiple videos talking about GBA Pokemon games coming to modern consoles, and I continue to beat the drum because I just think it, it makes too much sense. So we'll see. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in support of me, that is also always greatly appreciated. They announced a bunch of other stuff. Pokemon Sleep was no longer a meme, and it looks relatively interesting. They announced a new Pokemon Go Plus Plus kind of thing that'll work with Sleep, will also work with Pokemon Go, a new accessory that you can buy, and it's a nice size, and it looks all well and good. It'll probably be like $60, but... It's, it's nice, and I like what they're doing. I like that they're trying to continue to integrate Pokemon into your daily life. It was a huge success with Go. I still play Go from time to time. Everybody has it on their phone, even if they don't play it. So Pokemon continuing to dip their toe into that world is good to see. And the fact that it's no longer a meme, I think is good because the memes at a certain point just got exhausting. So Pokemon Sleep is a thing. It's coming this summer. We'll learn more about it soon. They've made a Twitter account, so it seems as if they're going to be heavily promoting this when it leads up to it launch so we'll see how it goes they gave us all the regular stuff too the masters stuff uh talking about pokemon unite the regular stuff that they promote in these events they announced a really cool pokemon tcg set which is classic cards in this really professional like high-end format with case and, and and play materials that are more high-end and we're going to learn more about that this year as well so there was some cool stuff in this presents but it's the first Pokemon Presents in a very long time that felt like an infomercial show. There was a lot of side stuff that doesn't grab me personally as a Pokemon fan. I'm here for the mainline games and I'm here for things in the periphery of the mainline games, the, the NSO stuff. So for that, we got a tease of the, of the DLC and we're going to do a whole video discussing it, like I said before. But there wasn't enough to really sink your teeth into besides the designs of some of the new Pokemon, which are great. Most of them are good. There's one that sucks, but all the rest are, are pretty good. So for me, it was disappointing because now we have to wait a decently long time to actually play this DLC. There's really nothing for us to play. In the meantime, there were no legitimate spin-off titles announced, no Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, no Pokemon Ranger or a brand new game, nothing from the past, no remakes, no new stuff, no Detective Pikachu 2. There really was nothing. Sleep, but I don't really consider that a, a spin-off like you would something else, like a Mystery Dungeon. So from my perspective of how I play Pokemon, it was, it was a disappointing presents. There wasn't a ton there. I'm excited about the DLC. I really think there's a lot they can do with the lore they've established in the Paldea region and the things that they haven't done yet. But there's not enough for me to sink my teeth into just yet for me to really pontificate and, and build up excitement about it just yet. I'm sure we'll get there. And through discussions with the community, I'm sure there's, there's going to be a ton of fun theories and talking points throughout the year about what everything could mean for the greater Pokemon lore and for what we'll get in the games. But from this one presents, it was disappointing. There wasn't a ton. And a lot of the peripheral stuff that I was hoping for that would kind of fill our, our Pokemon need until the DLC didn't get announced either. So while we are getting new mainline content this year, and it's good to see that confirmed so we no longer have to just work with it as speculation, there was nothing else. So it's going to be a light year for Pokemon. 
at the end of the day. We'll see if they announce more in the future. Maybe they're doing a different set of marketing philosophies this year. So maybe we're still getting something that wasn't announced on Pokemon Day, but it's their biggest day of the year. So why wouldn't they? We'll see. But those are my thoughts on the presents. I would love to know what you guys think down below, even though it was a little bit of ways from now. Uh, I apologize for making this video so late, but let me know down below. What did you think of the Pokemon Presents? What are you hoping to see from Pokemon in the future? And are you excited about the Scarlet and Violet DLC? Let me know below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Turn that notification bell on so you get an alert once a new upload drops. That's been it. My name's been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.